Hello, here we are back at it again in Blender. The Blender devs have been relentlessly diligent lately and they have upgraded so much that there were actually some casualties along the way, like my old Geometry Nodes procedural building tutorial, which will cease to work at Blender 4.00, which is when the new Geometry Nodes fields uh, version will be finally implemented. So the old attribute based weirdo version will no longer work. So this is why I'm updating the tutorial right here. Yeah, I've tried it already once and due to some other update, it didn't work. So now I think enough time has passed that actually we can be reasonably sure that this tutorial I'm uploading right now will be a little bit more future safe. I hope we will see. So um, I was visiting my sister in Lübeck and took some pictures of all these uh, nice intricate little brick building fronts and um, in order to be prepared I um, created some assets out of these photos that you can download in the description on Gumroad. Um, if you want you know, to kind of finance this operation it's going to be like I think one buck fifty or something so you know Gumroad and PayPal all take a share and if I put it at one dollar I will only get like 40 cents or something which sucks. However. You don't need these parts. You can model them yourself rather easily. And I'm going to show you like, I think the minimum amount that you need, let me quickly select them. At least you will need this part, which is uh, like the most important part, which is just the straight wall with the window, which will be like all your middle floors. If you make your building a little bit higher, um, you're going to need a corner version of this as well. Uh, I would recommend you to build a specific ground floor like this also with a version with a corner and you're going to need a roof again straight part corner and just a center. This model as you can see is not very <laughs> intricate it's just a flat plane with a picture on it but that will be enough and everything else will just be additional detail. However I'm still going to show you this additional detail because I will implement it in this tutorial and I don't want to leave you in the dark. I also modeled upper floors so like a different style of buildings that I'm going to kind of put on the upper floors. I've modeled this what I call a ring which is just kind of like a different style of module that I'm going to like spread around there in a vertical no in a horizontal line. <laughs> vertical is this one this is um, which I called a gap which is just another different style of uh, front that I'm going to spread out in a line vertically and last but not least I have modeled these little I believe they're called awnings and if you want you can model even more different details and scatter them around your model as I will do with these two bad boys. Um, the process is going to be the same. Oh yeah also if you model the ground floor you don't have to model a curb for it like I did here. Um, you can just model little parts. I just thought it would be cute you know. Those are the parts that we're going to need. Now let's actually get into it. Enough with the talking already, I know. Um, just like last time, because it was uh, very hilarious, I will start with the monkey. Oh yeah, also um, I should mention that I'm right now on Blender 3.20, the experimental build. The nodes, the geometry nodes, as they are in development, are going to change rapidly. So perhaps the nodes are going to be called a little bit different or look a little bit different or are different places. If you want to be sure that you are can, that you can follow everything precisely, I'm going to put like the ID code or whatever it's called in the description so we can get this specific version of Blender. First things first, let's be uh, let's be clean about it. So I'm going to call it uh, building generator. Um, I, I, you can rename things um, at many places, even in the Windows Explorer, by the way, with F2, which is like a standard key. And I'm going to create a new geometry nodes system and I'm also going to name it. And I'm going to name it the same. By the way, I cannot display screencast key in this version of Blender because the add-on has not been updated yet. I will try to remember um, telling you which keys I'm using. In any way, I would strongly recommend you to activate the Note Wrangler, the Note Wrangler add-on, which you can find by just typing in Note Wrangler and putting uh, and checking this little box. This will give you some cool things, like for example, holding down Control and right-click dragging to cut this node connection, because we're actually not going to need Suzanne herself which is why it doesn't matter which model we chose to start with. However, try not to click away now because it will be a little bit more difficult to reselect Suzanne because she doesn't have geometry anymore. And this time, as you remember last time, we used a mesh primitive grid 
This time we're going to go with the cube. I don't remember quite why I didn't do it last time. There was a reason, uh, maybe this uh, vertices slider wasn't there or something. However, a cube will provide us with exactly the geometry we need. Um, I'm going to go into wireframe mode now. I hope you can still see it on YouTube. And if I now slide up these vertices, you can see that we get some good old classical loop cuts here, which we are going to use to distribute our geometry. So first of all, we're going to need a combined XYZ node, which can be found under vector. It's the same reason as always. Now we can access the individual axes rather than just the one vector input. And right away, I'm going to create group inputs for them. Um, with N, you can show the side panel and under group, you can rename them. And right away, I'm going to change the type to integer and set the default and the minimum to one for each of these. Now I have the ability to go in here in this little modifier and increase the size of our cube. I've put it to 444 now and we need a specific number of loop cuts because we always want to have every vertice to have the same distance to all the neighboring vertices. So if I would put in a five now here, we would have a four meter cube with five cuts. Well, not with five cuts, but with five vertices, which is the equivalent of three cuts, which means that each and individual section here will be one meter by one meter. Sounds a little bit weird, but as you can see, if you imagine this is four meter, it has four sections. So logically every section is one meter. So in order to cement this into our model, I will choose utilities, math, get this add node and add just one to each and every input here. And then put them into the vertices count. Now if I select them and just hit H, I'm going to hide them, which will make them a little bit smaller. You can actually scale uh, in the geometry it's modifier as well. So I'm going to use that to kind of compact it a little bit, which I like. All right, and now whenever I increase these values, you will see that the individual subdivisions here stay the same size. I'm sorry, can only see this in the wireframe mode right now. Although, wait a moment, I'm actually able to select wireframe here. Oh, would you look at that, isn't that perfect? Okay, that's a little bit easier to see. All right, so now, as you can see, everything is made out of one meter by one meter squares. And if we compare this to the brick building that I've created, you might realize that the size kind of correlates because each individual element does not exceed the boundaries of one meter by one meter. They all um, follow that same recipe. And in the models that you will model, they should follow this same rule. Let me quickly move them out of the way and show you our generator again. So now we have this cube and like last time we want to scatter the details onto this cube. Um, this time the node is called a little bit different. It is under instances, instance on point. So I'm going to plug it in here. As you can see our model disappeared because we do have a, we do have assigned the point input. We do not have something in the instance input yet. So under input there is this node called object info which you can use in order to eye drop something. So I'm going to eye drop this straight wall that I've mentioned that is supposed to be like the main part of our building. So it's a good place to start. And I'm going to plug in the geometry into the instance. And as you can see now, uh, yeah, it kind of worked, right? So we do have a wonderful cube. Um, we have some rotational issues, which makes it a little bit hard actually to work with it. Let's actually for now build a little placeholder. I'm going to create a little cube, uh, move it over here, I'm going to rename it with F2 to placeholder and go into edit mode. It's, this is an important step to do it in edit mode, scale it down to 0.5. So it's actually half size. If you do it in object mode, you have to make sure that you have applied the scale. So now I'm going to eye drop this one instead. So this is a little bit easier to see now. We got a setup like last time. We can already decide on the different dimensions here that works flawlessly. Um, we have to do a couple of other things first. I want to make sure that when I scale up the building, it will not go into the floor. That would be a little bit unelegant. So I'm using this transform node under geometry 
to influence the Z translation, which will decide how much our building shifts on Z. And I'm going to straight up steal and copy this combine XYZ node and plug it in there. And I'm going to straight up steal the height input and put it into Z. Now, uh, these two still have 0.6 in them. That's of course not good. Let's put in zero. And now if I change the height, you can see that yes, the building changes height, but it's also shifting up a little bit too, too much. Um, we actually have to divide this input by two or multiply it with 0.5, which is obviously the same thing. And I'm going to hide this as well and make this a little bit smaller here. So it's all looking nice and tidy. And now when I change the height, it's actually growing from the bottom. I will touch this little cube and just kind of imply like a little window here so we can judge the rotation of this window. As you can see, this side works perfectly. The other three sides still need a little bit of work. Now, we can rotate these windows using this rotation value here. However, we can only rotate the entire selection for now, which is not what we need. We need to rotate specific parts. So we need some kind of way to only rotate a certain instance or a certain couple of instances here. The way this works is that this cube that is underlying this geometry now here, let me quickly show it up again. This cube here, has all these little vertices and each of these vertices has a number attached to them, which is called an ID. For example, zero, one, two, three, and then it kind of goes through a list. That means that we can address a specific vertice here by such an ID. For example, let's say I'm going to search for the ID node here and I'm going to compare this ID node by dragging off here, I'm going to type in compare, which will automatically give me some options for this compare node. Let's choose equal. So I can now compare this ID, which remember is like a specific value for a certain vertice to a specific number. So if I plug in this result, for example, into a selection, I can now find out that apparently ID number zero is a vertice that is down here. And if I now toggle up through the different IDs, you can see that we're kind of scanning through the individual parts of our buildings, right? And now I can, instead of equal, also choose something like greater than. Now I can select every ID that has greater than the value of 64, for example, and get the top half of this building. So this will now be the way that we can address specific points here. And this is the way we will select a set of faces that face in one direction and tell them you are going to be the group that is rotated 90 degrees and you are going to be the group that is, that is rotated 180 degrees. Um, there's another note that we need to learn about, which can be found under utilities, which is this switch node. And this switch node also has such a Boolean input. Boolean just means yes or no. Let me disconnect this one. And you can select what you're going to switch between. For example, a vector. And this vector I could, for example, plug into rotation. Now, right now, this switch is set to false, which means that every change that I do up here will apply. And every change that I do down here will be ignored until I switch it on and then the true value will show. Right now, this switch is just on off for every individual instance. But if I plug in such a Boolean value as I just presented to you, we can actually just rotate a certain part of the building. You might now say, wait a minute, you plugged in a value of 0 0.5, but this is quite a substantial rotation you got there. Well, this is another little annoying part. This input now, is a vector input and not a, well, I guess a rotator input, which in Blender usually involves Euler rotation where 90 is a 90 degree rotation. However, as I plug in this vector input, we are actually working in radians now. Not to worry, we don't need to learn new math. I'm just going to get this rotate Euler node, which I can plug in here instead. And now I can just type in 90 as we're used to it. 
So now we've learned a lot and we can put it to use. We have learned that each vertex has an ID and it has also other values like an orientation, like a scale that we can compare to something in order to extract a list of booleans, which is, well, this kind of little pink <laughs> line here, essentially just a list of on and offs. And we can use this on and off to switch specific vertices to some state. So let's say a rotation. We can say, take a look at these vertices and rotate them by 90 degrees. And using all that knowledge, we can now try to specifically address uh, this very wall here instead of just some random ID stuff.